In this short tutorial, I will talk about the Services tab of the Dream Factory Admin Console. So services are really at the heart of what Dream Factory provides. Dream Factory makes it really, really easy to add as many services as your applications need. And when we say service, what we really mean is an API, a data source that you connect to, and Dream Factory automatically secures the credentials to that particular data source and automatically generates a REST API, which you can use and view in the API docs. So at the heart of Dream Factory is a concept of service. And the way you add a service is to go in the services tab here. So you'll see listed all of the services that you've added to Dream Factory. When you first boot up Dream Factory, the first time you use it, you'll see a system API, a system service, uh, API docs, and a user service that are there. So you can't delete those particular ones. The ones that you add, you can manage in this list. You can delete them, you can add new ones, you can update ones, and so forth. So here you're looking at a number of different services that I've added. There's one for MongoDB. I've created a SQLite contacts database for a local SQLite database. I've connected to a MySQL database, so a nice REST API for that. I've got a local email service, so another SQL database, local file storage, and so forth. So to add a service, it's very easy. You go to the Create tab on the side here and select the type of service that you want to add. So you'll see a long catalog of different services that you can add and fill out a very simple form. And within about 30 seconds, you have a full-blown API for any of these uh, different uh, sources here in the list. Dream Factory supports a number. There's LDAP services like Active Directory, which you can use as an authentication mechanism. Standard LDAP as well. A bunch of different databases, where, which are obviously very useful for application development. A bunch of different NoSQL databases and some SQL databases as well. And I'll quickly show how one of these works in a moment. File storage, a bunch of different uh, options there, including Amazon, Azure, and some other ones as well. Email, so full-blown connection, REST API for a bunch of different email services, including the obvious ones like SMTP and some other uh, providers such as Mailgun and, and Amazon Web Services. Push notifications, so Amazon SNS is there. So this provides a convenient way to use the AWS SNS push notification and provides a REST API for that. Of course, you can still use any other type of push notification in your application outside of Dream Factory, so you don't have to use Dream Factory for push notifications. Uh, OAuth, uh, so the big popular ones here. We will soon add more, but these are by far the most popular. And then you can add remote web services. This is important. So if you have a REST API that you want to use and you need credentials for that in Dream Factory, you just put in your credentials and the headers that are required. And the benefit of that is you get Dream Factory as a runtime, as well as Dream Factory's security model on top of that remote web service. This also works for SOAP. So if you have a SOAP uh, service defined with a WSDL, Dream Factory provides a REST API wrapper to that SOAP resource and simplifies application development on top of that existing SOAP service. You can also develop your own custom REST APIs, and you do that by writing custom scripts in Node.js, V8 JavaScript, which is a sandbox JS engine, or PHP. More languages coming in the future. So this is the basic construct of services. I'll give a quick example. Let's say that I wanted to add a SQL database. I would go in here, select service type SQL DB, put in a name, a label, and a description. This is for my API. This is what the uh, API name will be when I call the API for this particular SQL database. The config varies depending on what type of service you're adding. In the case of uh, SQL, you would pick a driver. So a Postgres or MySQL, Oracle, IBM, etc. Pick the driver that you want. If I were connecting to SQL, I would automatically get a, a connection string here, and I can put in credentials for that database, which are securely stored by Dream Factory, and you can add additional uh, key value pair options and other attributes that uh, may be required to connect to that database. We have in-depth tutorials on what all of these options mean, and I'll point yeah, you to those in a moment. So this form is all you do to connect to a data source and create a service, um, and that's really all there is to it. The last thing is service definition. So if you are, let's say, connecting to a remote web service or something like that, Dream Factory comes with a great open source documentation uh, technology or tool called Swagger. 
and Swagger has a notation, uh, a JSON metadata definition of any REST API. So you can, for example, connect to a remote web service or write your own custom service, and you can copy in a JSON definition uh, that will be used to define the API within Swagger, and that becomes very helpful if you need to expose a definition of the API to different developers internally or externally, and that will then show up in the API docs here. So this is an optional step. You can still connect to a remote web service or uh, define your own REST API programmatically, and it, it's optional. Um, you can add that JSON definition, and what that will do is it will draw the Swagger interface for you. So it's really uh, convenient for that purpose. So that's all there is to services. Uh, I will point you to some much more detailed documentation. If you go into wiki.dreamfactory.com slash dreamfactory slash tutorials, scroll down to setting up API services. This will show you, for example, how to connect to a SQL database and the various flavors of SQL here, SQLite, and then other SQL databases. And we'll just give you the directions and show you how to do that. So that's a quick overview of services. Hope that's helpful. Check out the other tutorials we have on YouTube uh, for the other areas of the admin console and some more in-depth tutorials and how-tos online. Thanks.